You've probably run across the term open source during your adventures throughout the internet, if it's on VLC's website or maybe buried in your phone's settings. If you've ever wondered what that term actually means, I made this video for you. Hi, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer, and welcome to episode 3 of Linux Literate, Open Source Licenses. Software licensing is one of the most important parts of any software project. It can determine a lot of things, from how you find and recruit help to how the end user interacts with your software. The Linux kernel and most core components of Linux distributions contain programs that are licensed under the GNU General Public License. Wait, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, I'm, I'm sorry. I just get really excited when I'm talking about software licensing. Let me back up a bit. When writing software, developers use a programming language to create their program. The application, as it's written in its original language, is called the source code. When the developer is ready to distribute their app, the human-readable source code is often run through a software compiler, which translates, or compiles, the software into machine code, which is basically a series of zeros and ones. The compiled program is also known as a binary, or in the Windows world, an EXE. It's easy for a computer to take the source code and turn it into binary, but the reverse is not so easy. And this is a very important fact. You see, there are two different and sometimes opposing philosophies in software development, open source and proprietary. Since it's hard to turn a compiled program back into the original source code, it's possible for the developers to keep the source code a secret. This is what's known as proprietary development. It works similarly to how Coke's exact recipe is protected by a trade secret. With open source development, it's different in that the programmers share their source code on places like GitHub, which allows other people to see, redistribute, and expand the original program. Now, you might be thinking, wouldn't that be chaos? Or wouldn't the developer lose the copyright to the program they wrote? The answer is licensing. You see, the term open source includes how the software is actually licensed. Now, virtually all software is licensed. When you mash the I agree button on the iTunes EULA, the L in EULA stands for license, and you're agreeing to all the terms that are inside it, whether you read them or not. While Microsoft, Apple, and other proprietary software developers couch the nefarious bits of their legalese deep within the pages of their loquacious jargon, open source software takes a different tact. Open source licenses tend to be rather short and to the point. Here's a great example. This is the MIT license. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's really simple, actually. It retains the copyright of the creator while also granting everyone the right to use, share, modify, expand, or even sell the software, provided you include this text in derivative works. There are a ton of different ways to open source a program. Licenses span a huge range of what rights they grant or how restrictive they can be. Now, although there's a vibrant ecosystem of open source licenses available, they can generally be classified into two different categories, permissive and copyleft. The MIT license that I just showed you is a fairly standard permissive license. On the other hand, you have copyleft, where permissive licenses generally allow you to use the software for proprietary purposes. Copyleft licenses require derivative works to be shared in the same manner. Some also restrict the integration of non-copyleft products, going so far as to prohibit proprietary software from using copyleft libraries. Now let's talk about the GNU General Public License, which is what the Linux kernel is distributed under. The GPL version 2 is a bit longer than the MIT license, but to boil it down to the essentials, the license requires those making GPL software to respect the freedoms of the user. Those freedoms are, the freedom to run the program as you wish, for any purpose. The freedom to study how the program works and to change it so that it does your computing as you wish. The freedom to redistribute copies so that you can help your neighbor. And the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others. Now, these four freedoms, as laid out by Richard Stallman of the Free Software Foundation, result in a license that works much like a virus. The freedoms granted to you by the GPL require you to grant the same freedoms to the next person who uses the software. And I think that's pretty cool. Are you a software developer? What are your thoughts on licensing? Leave me a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. You can also support the work that I do over on Patreon or LibrePay. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. Thanks for watching.